Hello everyone, we have been assigned to assess and analyze Toys R Us. My name is Danny Viss and I'm a senior. I'm Ryan Mulvinell and I'm also a senior. I'm Lee Mabalabo, also a senior. My name is Oscar Gaines and I'm a senior and we're all accounting majors. During this class, we have been discussing Toys R Us and what issues have come about in their company, referring more specifically to the bankruptcy. Through our various websites, Trello Board, Google Forms, and Google Docs, we have been able to gather enough information to discuss and properly assess Toys R Us and their industry. I will be discussing a brief overview of the history of Toys R Us and a few general general points. Founder of Toys R Us, Charles Abbott, started the company after World War II, as he was the European institution of modern kids. He began the company with Toys R Us in 1957. By 1978, Toys R Us began the restructuring, gained popularity, in 2010, the company was registered for their cyber initial public offering. But with problems within the company and declining sales, Toys R Us was added up to its IPO three years later in 2015. Moving along with our analysis of Toys R Us, our group decided it was very important to mention its competitors. In the past few decades, the toy industry and the whole retail industry in general has been consistently changing and evolving. Rising technology has inspired more online shopping and e-commerce due to its convenience and ease of accessibility. In 2011, 7% of all toy purchases were made online. In 2016, that number was up to 14%. During this transitional period where there was a big change in shopping trends, companies started to put more emphasis on their online presence. However, Toys R Us was content with their philosophy that they were more than just a store. It was more like an experience. They thought they provided something more worthwhile and valuable than online shopping. However, they must not have taken into account that with online shopping comes cheaper products. Though minimal price difference, Toys R Us began losing a significant amount of sales to Amazon and Walmart. This began a price war, where these toy retailers would cut their prices in an attempt to increase their share of the market. In 2016, Amazon had over 2.1 billion in online sales, Walmart had over 1.2 billion, and Toys R Us only had 900 million. Toys R Us is a great example of a company who didn't react quickly enough to the market. Financially, Toys R Us is hurting. They were falling behind their competition because they couldn't invest back into their company. After reviewing their financial statements, it was easy to see why. Toys R Us had accumulated deficit and a negative equity balance of $1.2 billion. This left them with a negative 6% debt to equity ratio. This is one sign that they can't generate enough cash to pay their debt. Another way of looking at their ability to pay their debt is through their quick ratio. This measures their ability to pay their current debt with their current assets. Their quick ratio is 0.33%. Anything less than one is bad, and they're a high risk of not being able to pay their current liabilities. One of the results of this is the fact that they borrowed more money in 2016 than they actually paid on their debt. Their long-term debt is actually growing. They ended 2016 with a long-term debt balance of $4.6 billion. They listed 16 open accounts on their financial statements, with some of them having interest rates as high as 12.5%. <laughs> Sorry. Interest expense in 2016 was $457 million. Income before interest and taxes in 2016 for Toys R Us was $480 million. They showed a net loss of $29 million after they paid their taxes. So what caused all this excessive debt that crippled Toys R Us? Well, a big percentage of the result of it was the leverage buyout that took place in 2005. Bain Capital and a couple other private equity firms agreed to purchase Toys R Us via a leveraged buyout. This meant that the investors provided 20% of the purchase price and the company borrowed money to cover the remaining 80%. This cost Toys R Us about $5 billion. That's $5 billion of debt that will not be invested back into the company. This debt will not generate revenue. Finally, I will be dis discussing specifically the liquidation of Toys R Us and what factors caused it. 
As Oscar mentioned, they had a $5 billion debt in 2016 on their financial statements. The first factor that led to the liquidation was social media. On every social media platform, Toys R Us was labeled as a poorly managed company and everyone found out about the debt on the news, Twitter, Facebook, and many other websites. Lo loyal customers no longer wanted to shop at Toys R Us and many customers switched to their rivals, Amazon and Walmart. These rivals, as Ryan mentioned, also made it easy for consumers to switch because of their convenient online presence, quick delivery, and their lower prices compared to Toys R Us. After the news had spread, the next factor was Toys R Us's fourth quarter seasonal sales. After 2016, Toys R Us needed a great Christmas season to show investors that they were still a profitable company and still had a good portion of the market share. They boosted up their inventory amounts and did a lot of marketing and advertising to try to change their current image and get customers back to their stores for the season. They ended up having an awful season, adding to their large debt. This indicated that Toys R Us was a going concern and would probably not survive. This is what ultimately led to the liquidation and the eventual bankruptcy. This concludes our introduction. We hope you enjoyed our other videos analyzing Toys R Us more in depth. Thank you.